Thank you, Josie. That was great. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Standish Congregational Church on this Scout Sunday. We've already had a taste of uh, a little bit of the Scouts contribution this morning, and it's wonderful having them involved in the service this morning. Um, Scouts from uh, PACS here in Standish as well as in Hollis. So thank you, Scouts, for your participation and more to come. Um, by golly, it's a heat wave. It's almost 20 out there. <laughs> I hope everyone uh, managed the cold uh, successfully over the last couple of days. Uh, but once again, welcome, whether you're here in person, joining us on Zoom, or watching the service afterwards on YouTube or on our social channels. We are an open and affirming church. Whoever you are, wherever you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. And I hope you'll all join us for refreshments in the fellowship hall after the service. At this time, please join Scout Sawyer Melanson in the call to worship. A society that lives in the shadowed recesses of doubt and fear. God, God calls, calls us, us to, to be light. To a world where every greed is fed until there is no taste to life. God, God calls, calls us, us to be, to be salt. To a time when loyalties are discarded as easily as the clothes we wear. God, God calls, calls us, us to be faithful. faithful. Disciples of Christ, come, let us worship. Our hymn of praise is for the beauty of the earth, number 54 in your hymnal. Once again, welcome. Hopefully you all braved the cold successfully. Um, I wanted to call out a couple of uh, announcements before I uh, ask for any from, uh, from the congregation. Um, it looks like we will be welcoming a group of new members in the near future. Um, again, if you're interested in becoming a member, please um, come talk to me. Um, but I would like to put out a kind of a save the date for February 19th after church. Anyone who's interested in becoming a, a member uh, will have a, a get together and, um, and talk a little bit about what that means. So February 19th after church, save the date. 
Um, reminder that we'll be having an Ash Wednesday service on the 22nd, the beginning of Lent, um, preceded by a pancake supper at six o'clock, and then the service will start after, after supper around seven. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to um, call out is um, we are looking at a Lenten series for a uh, book discussion um, after church on um, four Sundays in March, likely. So um, we're looking at a book called The Last Week by a couple of biblical scholars named Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan. So if you have interest in that, and I know some of you are, have already told me that you would like to participate in something like that, um, that would be a book to take a look at and I'll send out more details as everything gets finalized. Um, and again, uh, welcome to Scout Sunday. I just wanted to put out there that, uh, you know, I know firsthand what um, the Scout program does for families and communities. Um, I was in Scouts briefly as a as a young young boy, and uh, and my son was in Scouts for a little while as well, and which led me to be a, a leader for a brief time. So um, I really appreciate uh, what the Scouts do in this community, and it's again wonderful to have them participating in today's service. So does anyone else have an announcement they'd like to make, Mary Lou? So these announcements always come with visual aids. <laughs> So this is the last day to your order for chili and chowder for Super Bowl Sunday. Um, so please put your order in. And the reason we're having this is uh, sponsored by the Caring Connection because we're always looking for ways to connect with one another. And we've settled on two ways to do that by having a concert, musical concerts after church, the end of February and the end of March. These are free and open to members of the congregation. And also, if you have friends or neighbors that might enjoy this, please invite them. So this is a fundraiser to uh, pay the fees for the Lighthouse Jubilee Singers, which will be coming at the end of February. And they have a very entertaining program. Some of us have heard them perform and know how great they are. So um, support this, and um, we'll find ways to connect with one another. Next, sorry. Uh, uh, the directory is out, so here it is. And um, it's warm off the presses, because I just took it off the copier, uh, up in the back of the church. And I'll show you where I'm going with that. One per I just want to add to uh, Mary Lou's when she, we're talking about the chili chowder that um, anyone who has volunteered to make the food that's to be brought to the church between 845 and 930 uh, next Sunday. And uh, so that would be very much right before church to bring in the foods that you volunteered to make the chili and the chowder and the cornbread. And that's February 12th. Also, when do we deliver the food? And we're going to deliver the food in the fellowship hall on February 12th between 1030 and 1230. So you can all go home and not cook. <laughs> I do have visual aids. So um, we are going to not resurrect, I don't mean that, but we're going to again have the little red wagon up here um, so that you can help with the food pantry cereals, although that wouldn't be our first choice. Kids are going to eat it. That's the point. And so um, Mary Lou said, well, we get a lot of peanut butter, but not jam. So that's another thing that you might think about um, bringing. Then John was 80. And so he didn't need another sweatshirt. So we asked people to bring undies. And so whitey tidies are up here and there's socks. And um, although that's not one of it, I mean, it's the food pantry, but if you happen to run into some whitey tidies, that'd be good or not. Well, it's because the food pantry is all about food, but we also have a miscellaneous table and we'll put the underwear and socks on that because People that come to the food pantry not only need food, but they may have other needs. So it's important to have that. So tell John thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> can we edit that out of the YouTube? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I can follow that. Okay. <laughs> the mission board has researched sources of heating assistance, and we posted a list on the bulletin board. But there's a new source of help aimed at people who don't qualify for Medicaid or general assistance, but still need a little bit of help now. And this is now available at the Standish Town office. And a total of $50,000 is available for residents of Standish who apply and qualify. You need to talk to Ruth Ann at the town office and get an application to fill out for this aid. And there's more information on the bulletin board. Anyone else? Okay, I'll just add one more thing. I'll, I'll actually be away next Sunday, so Sally Colgrove will be in the pulpit. So it's always lovely to have Sally here. Well, then let us turn more intentionally to worship as we offer our opening prayer. And I'll point out that I left a, an extraneous line after the amen, so you don't have to continue past the amen. Let us be in prayer. Light of the world, be our light this day. Creator of life, preserve our life this day. Holy God, pour out your righteousness on us this day. Light of the world, we gather to praise you on this day with our hearts, song, and minds. Amen.
Thank you, that was great. I really appreciate coming together and doing that. It really ties in with, um, with the message today. So thank you so much. Now, our message for all ages. Hi, Sawyer, Sierra, Josie, and Amelia. So they'll know we are Christians by our love. I, I love that sentiment. Um, how do they know we are scouts? Well, maybe by the uniform, definitely by the uniform, but also by the way a scout acts. And that is summarized in something you know that is called the scout law. And today we're going to share that information with the congregation. Um, so who starts? A scout is trustworthy. A scout's word can be counted on. A scout is loyal. A scout is true to family and friends. A scout is helpful. A scout cares about other people. A scout is friendly. A scout is friendly to all. Oh yeah, a scout is courageous regardless of age. A scout is polite to everyone. A scout is kind being gentle. A scout is kind. A scout knows where there's strength in being gentle. A scout is obedient. A scout follows the rules of his family, school, and troop. A scout is cheerful. A scout looks at the bright side of life. A scout is thrifty. A scout works to pay their own way. A scout is brave. A scout can face danger even when he's afraid. A scout is clean. A scout keeps mind and body fit. A scout is reverent. A scout is reverent towards God. Lastly, remember to be prepared. Good job. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you, God, for loving me. Always help us to show love. Always help us to show love. Thank you, God, for loving everybody. Thank you, God, for loving everybody. Thank you, God, for loving everybody. Amen. Please remain seated as we sing This Little Light of Mine, number 364.
Our scripture this morning comes from the fifth chapter of Matthew, following on the heels of the Beatitudes that we read last week together as a congregation. We're still in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus, per his usual pattern, is using metaphor to describe life in the kingdom of God. He uses some language that's familiar to us today, but when his original followers heard it for the first time, they may have had some trouble in determining what Jesus was trying to convey to them. So I invite you to try to listen with fresh ears, as if these were not familiar words, and attune yourself to seeing if God is bringing something new to your attention. So please listen as Zoya reads. Chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can, it be, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Here ends the reading. Thank you, sir. You can sit down in the congregation if you like. It's up to you. <laughs> Please join me in prayer. Light of the world, be our light today. Creator of life, preserve our life this day. Light of the world, we praise you with our hearts, songs, and minds. Amen. So I've been going to this church for a long time, and many of you have known me for a number of years. And even if you don't know me very well, there's likely at least one thing you know about me, that I'm a fan of the Philadelphia sports teams. Now, it always, always tickles me that around championship time, if the Phillies are in the baseball playoffs or the Eagles are Super Bowl contenders, somebody comes up to me and says, go Phillies or fly, Eagles, fly. To know that someone is rooting for my team, not because they care about the outcome, but simply because they know it's important to me on some level, just thrills me. Now, if I travel to Pennsylvania to visit family, and I wear my Eagles hat or my Phillies t-shirts, I don't particularly stand out. I'm one among thousands. Here though, I kind of stick out like a sore thumb or a bruised shoulder or a pulled hamstring. <laughs> in some way, in other words, I'm like a city on a hill, obvious, difficult to conceal. If you're a metaphorical city on a hill, you're on display. Jerusalem, in Jesus' day, and of course still today, is literally a city on a hill. In fact, among those in the crowd hearing Jesus' message, when he used this phrase, Jerusalem probably immediately sprang to mind. Jerusalem was built on an actual mountain, Mount Moriah, according to tradition, the place where Abraham brought his son Isaac to be sacrificed. So no matter where you were approaching the city from, whether it's from the south or from the north, you were going up to Jerusalem. But Jerusalem was also a metaphorical city on a hill as the holy city, location of the dwelling place of God. So what did Jesus mean when he said to his followers, a city on a hill cannot be hidden? For that, let's look at the phrase in context. Now, just before this statement, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Now, wait a minute. You might say, I thought Jesus was the light of the world. Well, let's, let's take a look at the nature of light. Light is what allows any of us to see anything. It's actually a very apt analogy for the relationship we have as contingent beings with God who is a necessary being. And without getting too far down the rabbit hole of philosophical theology, 
I'm referring to created beings versus a creator. And in the case of light, when we observe an object, we're viewing that object as reflected light. Say I were to take a walk out to our memorial garden and look at the bell out there, which used to hang in our original church building until 18 years ago. When I look at that bell, my eyes are receiving light, which reflected off the surface of the bell. The source of that light, before it reflected off the bell, came from the sun. So light is traveling over 90 million miles, striking the bell and reflecting into my eyes. And then my brain tries to make sense of it all. And that's our role as Christians, as people of God. Spiritual light comes from God emanates from God. Like physical light, if you can call it physical, which consists of several different wavelengths, each of which is interpreted as a different color or a different quality or infrared or ultraviolet, spiritual light consists of different wavelengths as well. It consists of kindness, of empathy. It consists of love, of compassion, Spiritual light manifests itself in working for justice, fairness, dignity of persons. Last week, we made reference to the fruit of the Spirit, all facets of spiritual light. And in us, we who are the light of the world, that light which comes from God, which traverses the infinite yet at the same time imminent distance to our hearts, that light is reflected off us and into the hearts and minds of those whom we touch, whom God has placed in our path to do good works which bring glory to God. A story in this week's Seasons of the Spirit worship materials makes a great point about light. I'd like to share it with you. Hearing the word cancer spoken from a doctor directly to us can be devastating. How much worse then are the words about how we must amputate your leg to keep the bone cancer from spreading. In his book, A Path with Heart, Jack Cornfield tells the story of a young man who had to have his leg amputated at the hip when he was just 24 years of age. As one might readily expect, he became angry, intensely angry. He became furious with healthy people, believing that they had unfairly received a chance to live a normal life when he had not. What had he done to deserve what he perceived as a horrendous punishment? He began to work with a therapist who uses art and meditation to help people deal with the spiritual journey of their recovery from cancer. She knew it would be a long and difficult battle. Perhaps surprisingly, the man worked hard, telling his story, painting his story, reliving his story. As he did so, some of the anger fell away. Instead of focusing on those he felt had received undeserved health, he began to focus on others who suffered a major physical loss. One day, he visited a young singer who was very depressed after losing both breasts. She found it difficult even to look at him. The man happened to be wearing short pants and desperate to bring the woman out of herself, he detached his artificial leg and began dancing around the room to the music on the radio. He jumped and hopped as best he could, snapping his fingers to the beat. The woman stared at him and finally, unable to contain herself, started laughing. If you can dance, she said, I can sing. Earlier in his therapy, the man had sketched a vase with a crack running through it. Frequently overwhelmed with anger, he would draw the crack over and over. Many years later, he looked at the picture again. When he acknowledged that it was not finished, the therapist suggested that he finish it. Slowly, he ran his finger along the crack and said, this is where the light comes through. Then he took a yellow crayon and drew light streaming through the crack to the inside of the vase. Our hearts grow strong at the broken places, he said.
Our light is a reflection, causing others to be able to see light from the source. And an individual light shining in the darkness is beautiful and can provide helpful illumination. But like so much in the Christian life, light becomes more powerful when it's multiplied. And it's so easy to do. Shine the light God has given you. Now, your light might be a different color than mine, different intensity than your neighbor's. It may shine into places others can't go, but shine it can and shine it must. If you can shine it, you can share it. I can't think of a better illustration of this than when we end our traditional Christmas Eve service with Silent Night. One solitary light gets passed from the altar, down the center aisle, one pew at a time, and quickly spreads to the ends of the pews and to the back of the church. That one light becomes multiplied dozens of times over until the darkened sanctuary is ablaze with the light of Christ. Find your light. Shine your light. Share your light. So I, I often get ahead of myself and submit the title of my sermon for the bulletin before I've completed writing it. So I don't want you, I don't want to neglect the third metaphor Jesus uses in this passage. You are the salt of the earth. Salt in ancient times, as today, had multiple functions. In addition to adding flavor, or more accurately, drawing flavor out of food, it was also used for cleansing and preserving. Once again, spiritual salt also serves multiple purposes. You probably know people who are out there salting the earth, some of them sitting right here in these pews. People in the communities across the world tirelessly working toward healing, cleansing, building, repairing. Christians are called to be salt, bringing the flavor of kindness, empathy, advocacy, just plain helping others. Christians are called to be light, our actions showing others that they're not powerless, they're not helpless. We can inspire others to actions large and small. Light that is shared is spread throughout the community. Salt that is liberally sprinkled brings out flavors of kindness and justice. I invite you to think this week about where the world might need salt today. Where are the darkened corners that need streams of light? How can we be salt and light in the lives of others? Amen. Now it's time to lift up to God and each other the joys and concerns of our hearts. So does anyone have a joy or a concern to share this morning? Um, continued prayers for Marge Pendleton this past weekend. She was in the hospital because she was so dehydrated and she's lost over 50 pounds. She's been going through tests and has more test schedule, but there's no diagnosis yet. So we all know that she's very sick and we need to have uh, prayers for the guidance of her doctors to find out what's wrong. Thank you. Starting a new musical journey tomorrow. I'm starting Introduction to Bagpipes. So, if you're in my area, I don't have bagpipes. I, my practice chanter is coming tomorrow, but it uh, should be fun. Great. Will, will we be able to hear them from here? <laughs> <laughs> I have a joy. I'm very happy to see Jim on uh, online. So good to see you, Jim. Is that Jim Pop? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know we, we continue to pray for Jim and as he deals with health struggles and, and Merlene and um, and the family. 
Anyone else? Loving God, light of the world, salter of the earth, may we be the spice in a world content with banality, the zest that stings minds focused only on themselves, the tartness that awakens mouths that speak only platitudes. Let us be the torch that shows the shadowed the way out of their troubles, the nightlight which comforts the fearful, the lighthouse which warns of dangers we all face, even as we offer up prayers for all those who need to feel the saltiness of God's tears and the light of the grace we can offer. Today we lift up all those dealing with illness, injury, discomfort, and pain. We lift up especially Marge Pendleton. We ask you to give the doctors wisdom and discernment an understanding of what's going on in her body and bring her healing and comfort and a sense of your presence. We also lift up Jim and Merlene Pottle, bring them strength, bring them comfort and healing. We lift up the scouts in our communities and the great work that they do. And we're grateful for their presence today and contributions to the service. Scout is truly reverent, and we thank you for their reverence today. And we bring you the joy of new learning, of growth, especially in the music area. And we pray that bagpipes will bring Brian joy and hopefully to the other members of his household as well. But we praise you for the opportunity to learn new things and to take up new joys and just find new meaning in music and art. Lord, we pray for peace and justice and ask you to continue to be with our world leaders and decision makers as we try and bring more and more justice to the world. Help us to be agents of justice and of your peace. May all who are searching find that community, not necessarily on a hill, but in all the ordinary places and people around us, as we have done in you. All these things we pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning we will celebrate the sacrament of communion. So let us join together in the communion hymn Break Thou the Bread of Life, number 294, and you may remain seated.
We are hungry. We are hungry for justice. We are hungry for love. We are hungry for true neighbors like us. We are hungry for peace. We are hungry for food. We are hungry for God. Here at this table, we encounter Jesus Christ each and every day. Yes, we visit him. But our time is here. Our time is the same. God, it's hard, hard to be mindful of those in need, hard to see those at our door who are hungry for what you offer us that is not food, and yet you keep calling us to do it. So feed us, Lord. Feed us so that we can feed the world with your peace, your justice, your acceptance, welcome, and love, and yes, actual food. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this bread and this cup so that we may be fed by you to go out and do what you call us to do that we may have courage, energy, acceptance, and love to serve others who hunger. Meet us in this bread and the fruit of the vine. At this table, may we be nourished so that we may go out into the world and continue the work you called us to, to love, serve, and care in the name of your Son, Jesus. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give thanks to you, O God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O holy God, creator of all people and worlds, send now upon this bread and this cup your life-giving spirit. As we partake of this holy meal, fill us with the Holy Spirit, that we may be one body and one spirit in Christ. All glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his disciples, and together they broke bread. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. When you eat of it, 
remember me. In similar fashion, he took the cup and blessed it and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. The gifts of God for the people of God. Eat, drink, and be thankful. Join me in prayer. We give you thanks, O God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, I'm so thankful for the faithful and regular contributions of this congregation to the work of our church. And we are not, we've not begun passing the plate, but if you have something to give, please uh, drop it in the offering plate uh, as you exit after the service. But as Katie plays the offertory, please be in meditation over how you may continue to contribute to the church and do the work of God in our community. join me in the prayer of dedication. We can make a difference through our gifts. We will bring the word of God to life today. We will bring hope to the despondent. We will bring love to the unloved. We will bring friendship to the lonely. We will bring freedom to the oppressed. 
loving God, receive and bless our offerings, and through the Spirit, work joyfully with them. Amen. Our hymn of dedication is Jesus Calls Us or the Tumult, number 304. benediction. Uh, the postlude will be number 512, Let There Be Peace on Earth, and the scouts will lead it, and the congregation will join in on the third line. Go now, beloved, to follow the love of God, to be surprised by God's wonder, to lift your voice for love and compassion. Dare to believe that you are people on a mission of healing and grace. Feel God's encouragement to be a blessing as you offer blessings with your heart and hands, and know that you never, ever go alone. Amen. After we finish singing, Katie will continue playing instrumentally, at which time you're free to begin to move into the fellowship hall. <laughs> 